everyone, and welcome to Asian Pacific Voices Radio, where you'll find stimulating conversations that explore diverse topics and stories impacting our communities. I'm your host, Rasha Goal, and today I have a very special guest that I'm excited to speak with. He has a very, very rare talent. Peter Yang. Peter lives here in Los Angeles, where I'm also located, but he hails from Texas, where I also grew up, and he photographs subjects all over the world. And when I say subjects, we are talking about lots of rock stars and celebrities. Uh, some of his credits include contributing to GQ, Rolling Stone, Esquire, and the New York Times Magazine. In addition, he shot campaigns for Coca-Cola, Comedy Central, Bank of America, and many, many more. His work has also been recognized by American Photography and Communication Arts. And Peter does have some travel advice for us. He says it's best to get a neck pillow an eye shade. Now you may look silly, but you'll sleep like a king. Peter Yang, welcome, celebrity photographer to our show. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, or a photographer, because you know I'm not that cool. But um, excited to be here and and uh, chat about chat about things. Well, we are very excited to chat with you too. So I'm going to start off just by even asking you, how did you get into photography? Because you come from a science-based family, as I understand. Uh, yeah, I grew up um, as as many others have as as an immigrant kid. You know, I was born in Taiwan and I grew up here. And um, while I feel like I, I was um, not really given a mandate what I could do and couldn't do, but I definitely understood the sciences and all that more. So um, when I went to school, uh, I, I kind of picked business because it seemed not too sciencey. It seemed sort of in the middle, but um, I kind of discovered photography there. And when I started doing it, I just kind of fell in love with it and and saw the world a whole different way. So luckily, the folks were cool with me switching over. I seemed to have a little purpose and motivation finally. So um, it kind of just started there at school. I love that. But the thing is, you were able to find yourself a place in Hollywood and shooting for some of these major, major corporate companies. So how did you transition into that? I guess it was slowly, sort of slowly, day by day. Um, I started out in journalism, so working for, for newspapers in, in Texas and interning in New York. I always loved movies. Um, I always, I always... Probably saw every movie that came out in the '90s, literally, and so I used to get lost in magazines and, you know, stories about actors, movies, personal life. You know, you know how it goes. So um, even though I started in journalism, I was always very interested in photographing actors, and and um, and I was able to have a little bit of that exposure at the newspaper, and um, just kind of one at a time. You don't get the cool ones at first, uh, but <laughs> that sounds awesome. But, um, you know, you kind of build your way up and then build that, build that trust. And the funny thing about photographing actors, they're all cool. We're all God's children. We're all beautiful. But um, the thing is, like, to photograph an actor, you need actors in your portfolio. You know, to have actors in your portfolio, you need to have photographed actors. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a conundrum. But, uh, you know, you get your little breaks along the way. And hopefully it just it just goes. Well, and Peter, speaking of breaks, I mean, I'm going to say, wow, you've had a big break because you have photographed numerous celebrities. In fact, one of the ones that really caught my eye, of course, was Pedro Pascal. Uh, many of us are familiar with his work, but even John Legend. I mean, there's so many. Uh, if you check out Peter's website, which we'll give to you later. So who would you say, I'm going to come back to Pedro because I want to hear how that shoot went. But I want to ask you, who would you say has been one of your biggest influences, whether in or outside? Side of the industry. I think growing up when I was a kid, I, before it was cool, I was very, I was very into like comic books. That was kind of my first view into art. Um, I love like the Ninja Turtles, like when they were black and white and violent, you know, before they ate pizza and said cowabunga. Um, and um, a lot of the old Marvel. I, I always had that appreciation for art when I was a kid. And then when I got into photography, um, I, you know, I love the work of Annie Leibovitz and Richard Avedon, a lot of like the classic portrait photographers. And um, I feel like you can learn so much through YouTube and other ways now. But back then, 
um, I learned a lot of photography just through the like behind the scenes photos at the beginning, you know, at the front of Vanity Fair or something like that. So I always feel like someone like Annie Leibovitz was my teacher. Every month I would look at that little photo and be like, where are the lights? You know, uh, how did they do that? And, and kind of self-taught, but also taught by others in a way. I was going to say a lot of self-learning, it seems like. Um, you know what, Pedro, like so many people that, that I photographed, I didn't know a ton about previous, previous to the shoot. Um, ever, especially having a daughter now, I don't have a lot of chance to watch TV or kind of be up to date with things. But my impression of him was from like, like where he plays really serious characters. You know, and and he's played Pablo Escobar. Um, I'm almost sure in a serious role. So, having not known a lot about him, I thought he was going to come in as a South American serious actor. And when he came in speaking <laughs> completely um, United States accent with uh, and hilarious. I was like, what is happening? And then I watched the interview ever, and he's like the funniest, most char charismatic person ever, which everybody else in the world knows, apparently. I was completely like thrown off by the whole experience. But he was, he was so warm. He was so funny. He has kind of this Valley Girl character that he sort of does that he kind of, I mean, he, he, he was great. And so, um, it, 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 it kind of rarely happens where I'm, I'm surprised by someone. It was probably my lack of research. But um, he just has it. And then, and then I've watched a lot of his work since the shoot. And, you know, as the world knows, he's amazing. So that, that was really fun. Oh, I, I think it's so awesome that you got to um, photograph him. Well, let's talk about your process. So, of course, you know, there is that research. But what are some elements? What are some things that you work through when you are photographing some of your subjects, especially when it comes to celebrities? Like, how do you ensure they feel comfortable? And, and how do you come up with maybe the theme or the look um, of what that shoot is going to be like. I think the number one thing to be comfortable is like getting a lot of prep, prep work done ahead of time. And it's to kind of communicate sort of the theme of the shoot, the visual, what's kind of expected. Um, sometimes it's a shoot where we're just doing, you know, it's like a more dramatic shoot or really cool lighting. Sometimes it's a humorous shoot and you don't want someone going in with this mindset that they're doing something cool and serious. And all of a sudden, you know, you've got a trampoline and a rubber chicken or something, uh, things I have not done and hopefully will never do. So we kind of communicate that I kind of concept alongside the magazine or with the movie poster folks or, you know, whatever, whatever we're photographing. And there's a great understanding of what we're doing. And then on set, I think, um, I think I'm just like pretty chill. I'm very, very not Hollywood, whatever that means. I'm just told that a lot that I'm not very, um, I'm a little bit more introverted, you know, and it's very important for, for my subjects to feel comfortable. So I'm just kind of very real with people. I've actually learned to be way more affirmative because coming from an Asian background, you know, a compliment is, is when they don't tell you you did something wrong. So I feel like I've learned to be way more affirmative, to, to say things look good, to smile more instead of having my thinking face. I definitely know I've done a lot of shoots just because my vibe is chill. I think a chill vibe will take you very far in life. And then, of course, um, even though I don't express it in a very prideful way or a very arrogant way, I, I'm very... I'm very prepared for a shoot and I have, I have a very strong understanding of what I'm trying to achieve. So when I'm communicating with people, I feel like I'm collaborative, but it's, it's also like pretty clear, you know, and once we're on the same page, it just goes pretty easily, I think. So you've done, of course, you know, individual celebrity and rock star shoots, but you've done a lot of corporate as well. Is there a moment or a person that stands out to you? They're not, they're not always the most like visually exciting shots, but you do get to meet folks who have a lot of influence and, and matter even more than, than our fine actors do in the world of politics and such. So, you know, I, I went once to Nebraska to photograph Warren Buffett. At the time, we took a little walk from one spot to another. 
And I was just like, wow, that was a minute and a half. I wonder, you know how you say like if a, if a billionaire drops like, like, like a hundred dollar bill, it's actually not worth their time to pick it up. I was like, wow, that, that was cool. And I, I was getting married at the time. And he says, you know, we're, we're invested in Hellsburg diamonds or something like that. He's like, you should go over there. He was like pitching me one of his companies to buy a ring. So I thought that was funny. I've had the fortune of photograph, um, I think every president since George W. Bush or so, you know, or no, since Clinton. It's really interesting meeting uh, all sorts of folks and kind of having real conversations. You know, we don't have all day, but get to sit there and have a real conversation. And I don't know, I feel like I've been around a lot of greatness and influence, you know. Uh, it hasn't rubbed off, but it's, it's, been, it's been very, very cool. I mean, it's so fascinating, the, the types of people that you've met and encountered and had the opportunity to work with. Is there someone that you would like to um, shoot with that you haven't yet or, or some type of a creation that you would like to do? As far as people I like to shoot with, my two favorite musicians kind of ever are Tom Waits and Fiona Apple. Uh, it might not be every photographer's dream shoot, but that, that would be, that would very much be mine. This is kind of a funny one. I think Taylor Swift is super interesting. I, I photographed her quite a bit, like many times actually in the past. I feel like Taylor Swift then and Taylor Swift now are two completely different entities, stratospheres. So I'd, I'd be curious. I'd be curious what, what that, that experience is like, you know? It's funny. I don't really consider myself a huge music person, but they're all they're all musicians, it seems. Now you're saying curiosity, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one at you and see if you're open or able to share. Has there been one experience that you would just not want to go through again, or someone who just gave you such a hard time? First of all, people people always hope it's it's someone like really famous to have like a juicy story or something like that. But in all honesty, like everyone I photograph who's been at the level of like the rock or whatever, Ryan Reynolds or something. They're all just lovely. I feel like to be super, to be super famous, you need like a level of humanity or something, or maybe I just haven't met some of the super special ones. Uh, the really difficult ones have been more like certain reality stars or things like that. People, I don't know, maybe people with a little chip or something, but the hardest shot I've ever had was, was um, some years ago, I photographed uh, President Ahmadinejad who was the, I don't know what you call it, you see the president or the dictator of, I, I don't know, I'm so sorry, not educated, but of Iran at the time. And I photographed him at a hotel across from the UN when I think all the leaders of the free world was saying, dude, you shouldn't have nuclear arms or so on and so forth. So anyways, he came over and uh, long story short, it was like an 11 second shoot. His people were not happy that I was had done a tight portrait, which was kind of requested by the magazine. But um, his people weren't stoked about it. And it just became I was basically um, uh, held hostage by his uh, regime or his his folks. And then it became a whole thing where the Secret Service had to come and like, bail me out. I don't think we have time for the full story, but essentially the secret service had to come and like uh, rescue me. And in the middle, I kind of sent an assistant out with like the, 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 the pictures on a card because I'm like, they're going to take this and crush it. Like it was getting pretty gnarly. He was lovely for all 11 seconds. I had him, but um, his, his folks were kind of challenging. So that was kind of crazy. Uh, that's a memory, Peter. I, I'm sure I would remember that one, that one for the books. So Peter, you entered the industry at a time where there weren't a lot of Asian American artists, but we know that that has changed over the years and you've had the opportunity to work with some incredible talent. Talk to me about that opportunity um, and how, how has that impacted you, especially when you're getting to work with fellow Asian Americans? Over the years, I've had a, I've ch had chance to really photograph sort of few Asian actors. Back in the day, I, I worked with John Cho and Kumail uh, Nanjiani. Um, but more recently, I've had a chance to work with, 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 with many others with kind of the advent of having more, more shows, sort of more representation from folks who are doing amazing right now, like Simu Liu. 
I think Steven Ewan. Um, I keep getting caught on him because he was on Conan once and he said my name is pronounced Yun. Yun. And I'm like, even my Korean friends are, no, I think it's Yun. It looks like Yun. But yes, he's amazing. And I photographed him. Simu Liu during the pandemic, which was kind of, kind of surreal between being in the pandemic, but also working with not only Asian talent, but we had an all Asian crew uh, talking about our experiences. It was a huge honor recently to work with uh, Michelle Yeoh, who I just grew up, grew up idolizing, and she's kind of getting her, her recognition these days. Well, she's always had her recognition, but here, um, who, who is, who is just incredibly graceful, but also uh, hilarious. Like she was kind of in the elegant, most elegant of ways, like kind of making fun of trash talk. Like, I don't know. She was just, um, she's just hilarious. She's like silently hilarious. I had a chance to speak with a lot of actors sort of about now, you know, about their experiences. And it's been really, really cool kind of sharing that, sharing that with them. I hope I have, you know, a lot more chances coming up and, and um, it does feel a little bit different. Because you have been doing this for a while and just with your experience, what kind of tips could you share with someone who wants to get into the photography arena? Sure. You know, I did want to say one thing, because when you're talking about the com camaraderie, it's a hard word. When you're talking about the camaraderie of things, um, it's funny because I feel like in the past when I work with actors, even though I feel... I feel way more comfortable than I did back in the beginning. There's still sort of, there's still sort of a, um, reverence is the wrong term, but you kind of like are, are pleasantly fearful of, of meeting people. And I feel like uh, with, with Asian actors, um, there's almost, I have to remind myself that not to be too familiar with people. Cause I just look at their faces and I'm like, Oh, you look like my friend. You look like my cousin or something like that. And I, I just want to be, Hey bro, how's it going? I don't know you. You don't know me, but, but I do know you. Like I know you and I'm like, you know what? They don't know me. Let's, let's just start the conversation in a normal place. But I was photographing someone at the hotel where everyone was getting ready. Right. So then at the end I was waiting in valet and everyone walked by like Randall Park walked by Sandra. Oh, everybody walked by and where I would normally just kind of be kind of like, Oh, just on the side, just, respectfully looking at people walking by not saying everything you know Randall Park like my Randall I love your stuff I'm a fan you know awesome keep it up like I was just like I was just kind of hollering at people which is so not my personality and he's probably who the hell is that guy that's the best way I can sum it up when it's like photographing I hope it doesn't always feel this way but sometimes when I'm there it's still kind of like oh huh? we did it you know we're here we did it good job that was so important to share. Plus, you know what? It's that feeling of home that you get. I can relate to what you're saying because that has taken years for me to get to that place too. When you see other South Asian Americans, I feel the same or even other Asian Americans. So I totally understand. So thank you for sharing that. What suggestions or tips do you have for people who want to enter this business? Because it's constantly changing. Well, first, I'd love to know for myself so I know what to do next. But um, that's always like a journey I'm trying to have. So um, I would say, though, like if we're talking about being a photographer and the thing I don't do well or I can't really speak to is the promoting of yourself, like how to do social media, how to get yourself out there, because that has never been something I'm good at. But I think it's something that's very important. I would say in terms of the actual art of being a photographer, there's so many people out there with so many voices, um, some are even unique. I think to have a very strong vision of what your vision is, you know, instead of generalizing on everything, figure out what it is that you love to do, what's your style. Um, I think you wanna input, like what, look at a lot of photography, have a lot of influence. Um, I think a mistake I made earlier is thinking that everything had to kind of come from my own brain and I think every artist is influenced by others. Um, so it's kind of to develop your style, to have a strong opinion of what you like and what you don't like and kind of follow, follow that. Uh, one thing that helped me out a lot, it was ultimately limiting, but at the beginning, I only liked pictures with a certain kind of comedic feeling, a, 
a certain irony to it. So anything that wasn't that didn't have a certain theme that wasn't lit the way I wanted to light things, I would think, oh, this is no good. So I only like this really shallow amount of photography. And it was the direction kind of that I aspired to. Now I kind of like any style that doesn't look like my style. I'm influenced by everything else is way cooler. But I, I do think early on having that re really narrow lens was, was helpful for me looking back. Thank you for sharing that. Peter, we could keep talking to you forever because I'm just so fascinated by the photography, the styles and more, but um, we are almost out of time here. So I do want to ask you, where can people find you? What are your social media handles, website? Where can they go? Oh yeah. Uh, my website is uh, just peteryang.com, Peter and then Y-A-N-G. And then Instagram is uh, yo Peter Yang, uh, one word as it goes. And then I think I technically have a Twitter, but I haven't used it in maybe ever. But if you want to see a picture of me doing a, a jump kick, I think that's what my Twitter picture is. That is also uh, at yo Peter Yang with zero messages or maybe two. So, oh no, they're called tweets. I believe they're called tweets, right? Um, so that, that's pretty much it for me. So Peter, before I let you go, who is next? Who are you shooting next? It sounds cooler because I, I can't say because everything I feel like is an NDA these days. But I always don't know who I'm shooting next. Since my last three shoots got canceled because of the, the actor strike. So solidarity with our actors and our writers. But um, I honestly don't know how long this is going to go. And uh, so I've been, I've been um, you know, I'm constantly photographing kind of personal work in my studio, looking for interesting subjects. So nothing planned right now. I'll let you know when the strike's over. Yes, I'm with you on that. We do stand in solidarity with, um, with our actors and creatives and talents. And so thank you for mentioning that as well. And um, maybe we could do a Bollywood shoot, Peter. Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Well, Peter, this has been so much fun. Um, I've just really enjoyed learning more about you and your work. So once again, I want to thank Peter Yang for being on our show today. Cool. Thanks to you, Rasha, and the team at Asian Pacific Voices Radio. Um, I had a blast here, and um, I'm, I'm so honored to be on, on the show. So um, thank you all so much. I do want to thank Peter Yang, our photographer today for his time and for joining me on today's show. And again, make sure you check out his work on his website and on social media. We'd also love to hear from you, our valued listeners, about any suggestions for future guests or topics, things that you're interested in. And also don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, as well as follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Asian Pacific Voices Radio is produced by Asian Culture and Media Alliance. We are a nonprofit that empowers our Asian and Pacific Islander communities with a voice through media arts. Now, if you'd like to support our program, please do visit AsianPacificVoicesRadio.com. Once again, I'm Rasha Goel. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been such a pleasure. And don't forget to join us next week for another exciting and thought-provoking Asian Pacific Voices Radio. Until then, take care, everyone. 